Hello everyone, I'm here today to talk about the glomerulus. So first let's look at a picture of a kidney uh, and get an idea for where the glomerulus is. So here is the kidney and you can see we've zoomed in right there uh, and we're looking at the cortex and the medulla. Um, and then this whole area is a nephron. And you can see right here in red, that's where the glomerulus is. It's the beginning, basically a capillary bed where a lot of the plasma is filtered uh, out of the capillaries and into the urine. So let's take a closer look at the glomerulus. It's made up of uh, a few different parts. Um, we have an afferent arteriole uh, that sends the blood into these uh, glomerular capillaries and then uh, once they're uh, filtered at the glomerular capillary level then they're, they exit the uh, area through the afferent arteriole. Uh, one thing that's not pictured in this area is the these mesangial cells, uh, and these support the capillaries and are kind of hidden in between each of these um, glomerular capillaries. You'll also notice that um, that the whole glomerulus is included within this Bauman's capsule, and so uh, uh, the Bauman's capsule is made up of two different layers. Uh, one is the visceral layer, which surrounds the capillaries, and then the second is this parietal layer, uh, which is on the outside of the capsule. Uh, the space in, be in between the uh, visceral and parietal layer is called Bauman's space. Uh, this is the, also called the urinary space or the uh, capsular space, uh, and that's really important because that's where all the filtrate goes um, before it le leads out through the um, proximal tubule. Uh, two other important concepts are the vascular pole, which is basically the side where all the vascular comes in and out of the capillary bed, uh, and the urinary pole, where all of the um, ultrafiltrate, which will become urine, uh, exits. Also, this whole area is called the uh, renal corpuscle, um, this, this area here. So the function of the glomerulus is to remove all this plasma from the blood uh, and filter it and then produce urine. And so uh, the most important part of the glomerulus is the actual membrane between the capillaries and Bauman's capsule. So let's take a closer look at that membrane. It's made up of three layers, uh, an endothelium, um, a basement membrane which has three sublayers, uh, and an epithelium. The endothelium is basically similar to uh, the endothelium in a capillary, except that it's got the holes are much bigger. Um, these holes, which are called fenestrations, are much larger uh, than a normal capillary, but uh, they're not that big. So they're big enough. They're they're small enough that they won't let a red blood cell through. So a red blood cell won't fit. But something like a albumin protein um, would be able to get into the endothelium. But then things like cations and anions are definitely going to be able to pass. The basement membrane, however, uh, is a lot thicker. So this lamina densa, the middle layer, is a very thick layer that is probably one of the most important um, membranes uh, in, 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 this, in this whole system. The lamina rara interna is basically fused to uh, the endothelium uh, and, and doesn't play as big of a role as the lamina densa. The lamina rara externa is fused to the epithelium. So, and then the epithelium is actually probably my favorite uh, part of this, uh, this three-layered membrane. The epithelium is made of um, these cells called podocytes. And the podocytes are like these spiders. So here's a podocyte. And it's got these spider legs that extend all over uh, the basement membrane and form these things called foot processes, or pedicles. Um, and why they form this is that they, they cover the, ba the basement membrane, and then they create these little areas in between, like right here, um, called a filtration slit. So this is, is uh, the second most important uh, way that things are filtered. So if, for example, a plasma protein, if it was able to get through the endothelium, that seems likely, um, and then it would be unlikely that it would get through the lamina densa, um, but it would be also unlikely that it would get through one of the filtration slits. Uh, so these are the kind of the lines of defenses that we have um, in the 
the, the, the membrane separating the capillaries from Bowerman's space. So we can take a look at a schematic of this. Um, and here's the podocyte. So this is what I called the spider. Um, and you can see it's got all these legs that shoot out in every which way. Uh, and then you can see here that it has a mixture of feet and these filtration slits. So if blood is coming in, uh, if, here's a capillary, so if blood is flowing through here, it can go out through, like this green arrow, it can go out through one of the fenestrations uh, in the endothelium. And then uh, if it's able to get through the basement membrane, and uh, then it would have to travel through one of these uh, filtration slits in between the feet of the podocyte. Um, so you can see here that there are the, kind of these three layers, the fenestrated capillary endothelium, um, the basement membrane, uh, and the epithelium that is formed by the pedicles and the podocytes. So the, the actual spaces themselves are not the only thing that is filtering the blood. There are also these negative charges caused by uh, negatively charged glycoproteins that are bound to different parts of the membrane. So we have these, uh, these, these little negative charges everywhere. Uh, and that also helps uh, control what enters and exits the cap, uh, the Bauman space. So things that are negative are going to be repelled and things that are positive are going to be um, encouraged to pass through uh, the, the membrane. So here we can see that, uh, that there's... Uh, this is actually a scanning electron micrograph, and I think it's really cool. We can see, so here's the capillary um, right here. Uh, this is all blood flowing through here, and then this is the um, this is the endothelium, so this is the capillary wall. This right here is one of the fenestrations that we talked about that proteins can go through, um, but they're going to get blocked because we got the basement membrane here. And you can actually see the three layers of the basement membrane. You see there's a little bit of lightness, and then some darkness, and then some more lightness. Uh, and so that's the uh, lamina rara externa, the lamina densa, and the lamina rara uh, interna, right there. Uh, and then we can see the, the pedicle from the uh, podocyte, and these arrows here are pointing towards um, these filtration slits that allow everything in. So this is a really cool scanning electron microscope view of, um, of, of, of this this trilaminar membrane. So quick question. What particle is least likely to be filtered through the glomerular filtration barrier? One, a cation, B, an anion, or C, a large negatively charged protein? So the answer is C, a large negatively charged protein. Remember, the trilaminar membrane is charged negatively and repels charged proteins, uh, and large things such as proteins can't make it through the basement membrane. Um, and this is actually pretty clinically relevant because uh, in, some, uh, in some diseases, there's a loss of this negative, uh, this negative charge, and it allows protein to move through. So if we had a loss of the negative charge and somehow these became positive, let's say we have albumin here. Now albumin, like the other plasma proteins, almost all the plasma proteins have negative charges on them. And so if this was positively charged, even though the basement membrane doesn't, isn't supposed to allow albumin or large proteins in, it can still pass through because of this, this charge difference. Uh, and so then we get protein in the urine, proteinuria, which I think is what is occurring with our, with our patient. So there's something wrong with the glomerulus um, that is causing proteinuria, proteinuria because it's not supposed to pass through, the, through this glomerular basement membrane. So I also included a histology slide here because I thought it would be a cool way to kind of wrap together some of the concepts we're talking about. So here's the uh, renal corpuscle. Um, this whole area is the renal corpuscle. Um, and right here we can, uh, we can see the proximal tubule. Um, it's making this the tubular pole or uh, urinary pole. Uh, this would be the vascular pole. And here we can see the afferent uh, arterial and the efferent arterial. Not actually how sure how to distinguish those, but um, that is what's happening in this uh, in this picture. That would make this white area Bauman's space, 
or the uh, capsular space. So this is where the ultrafiltrate collects after being pushed out of the capillaries. Um, these are all capillaries kind of wound up together. Uh, and that's where blood is being pushed through and all of the filtrate is coming out into the Bowman space. We can see two of the cell types that we talked about so far. Um, the mesangial cells, uh, which generally stain pretty dark. Uh, and then we can also see um, podocytes. So remember the podocytes are the, the cells that are spider-like and have the, the feet, uh, the foot processes that, that create uh, these filtration slits uh, that allow for the ultrafiltrate to move move out. Um, so I think that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, another way to kind of look at this is to compare it to um, a pathological one. So here, this is from my LO on, uh, uh, on pathophysiology of diabetes, and this is an example of diabetic nef nephropathy. So this is a um, physiological uh, glomerulus and has a lot of the features that we just uh, went over. And then this is a pathological one. Um, showing what is called uh, highline sclerosis, which is basically this buildup of this uh, damaged tissue shown here in pink uh, within the, the capillary system. And you can imagine if there's this buildup of glycosylated products um, kind of uh, creating these lesions on the membrane, we're going to get insufficient um, flow across the membrane uh, which causes the diabetic nephropathy and really destroys the ability of the kidneys to function. So I think that's a cool way to look at the histology there.